the spring schedule. But um, we had a repertoire of experiments that seemed to work pretty well with third grade and fourth grade that were used in the past, uh, even before I came on board with the program. <clears throat> And most of the time, of course, you want to, as much as possible, have the uh, experiment be the same as be on the same topic of the learning, either as a reinforcement of what they've already learned, or uh, taken it to another level, like taking another step or something. In this particular case, the experiment I decided to bring to you today, this one isn't necessarily tied to any specific topic, but what the teachers really loved about it and really appreciated, because this is the second year we've been at this school, and it's the same group of teachers, uh, is that it, it, it really works with the scientific method. And in general, these teachers really appreciate any science stuff that, that we can do because the elementary school kids are not uh, tested on their science requirements uh, because they have so much testing. Young kids, it's a lot of testing, so the state only tests on pretty much the three R's pretty much. They don't get into the other sciences and things, and so the teachers really appreciate uh, some way in which that you know people can come in and, and emphasize the science as best they can because if you don't get tested on at the end of the year it sometimes gives that impression that it may not seem as important and so our influence has been in, uh, the teachers feel our influence has been invaluable uh, for that so this ex uh, particular experiment uh, the clean water experiment is again the emphasis is a scientific method where we have a group of materials um, we have larger rocks, smaller pebbles, and some sand and cotton balls. And what we do is we take, very scientifically and carefully, take a two liter soda bottle, flip it over, and we use the plastic ring that's here. This is set up ahead of time, which is, you know, because you can't have it all, and we only have an hour. Uh, just have some uh, piece of uh, uh, just a Brillo pad that was cut up and, and put over the end to keep stuff in there. Sometimes we use the cotton balls as a fourth ingredient, sometimes we don't. It just kind of depends on uh, how things go or what you know how we want to go about it. Because uh, there's so many variables with this. Because uh, the way this filter is set up is <coughs> we start out telling them, usually what we do is, you know, is we had to do three sets of experiments. The first experiment is you have to use all the materials, but pick the in, in layers, but pick the order in which you want them to go in. And whether and then their hypothesis then is that it is uh, whether that particular order is going to make the water cleaner. Uh, I didn't bring an example with me, but the water that uh, we start with, we just take some dirt from outside and put it in, in, the, in some water out of the tap. And so it's really filthy. I mean, it's almost sometimes a color of coffee. And there's different chunks, too. That's one thing, you know, the little bits of bark mulch, or there's grass, or bits of leaf, or something in there. So you have a variety of sizes of, of, of things that you want to get out of the water. And so, well, that's actually the thing I forgot to mention, was the first thing we do is have them describe the sample. Because one of the most important things is they say, oh, it's dirty. <laughs> well, how do you know it's dirty? <laughs> you know, and to get them to think about, you know, because that's a conclusion, but it was based on some observations to get them thinking about, well, it's the color or it's the consistency, you know, some of them were almost mud-like, at least on top, the stuff that was floating on it. And so we get them to describe that, so that's their starting point. Then they decide, okay, we're going to put these things in this order and the water's going to be cleaner. Or, so, so we go ahead and we pour it through, like, sometimes... Like what they often, it's, it's, it's funny what kids will do, but they usually put them in more or less in order, where they'll put some sand first, kind of like that. And then they'll put the medium size, about like that. And then the larger ones on top. Just enough. And so you, you kind of get the idea of what these things would look like. And as you can see, you can imagine there's a lot of variables here. You have different sizes of stuff. You have different, you know, you could have a lot of sand or a little bit of sand, a lot of big rocks, a few big rocks. So we try to 
minimize the number of variables just by asking them on the first experiment what order you want to put them in. And we go, we have a number of volunteers, we go around each table and we'll help them pour, pour some in one at a time. You know, each, we usually groups of four or five, so each kid has something to do, which is also important. Um, and so, um, then they go ahead and pour the water in, and of course they use the other half just to collect it. And then we have uh, clear cups that we pour the results into. And then they set them aside because there's two more experiments to it. And of course they're all impressed. The water comes out the bottom and it's a lot cleaner than it was. And they said, oh, it's cleaner. Well, then the question is, okay, now your results are, what, what makes you say it's cleaner? You know, so you get back at the color again. It's a lighter or darker than it was before. Are there any, you know, when you notice those larger chunks, you see any larger chunks in there, no, yes or no? You know, so it gives them an idea of what filtering does in particular. And generally speaking, then, just getting their observations. You, you had something, you tested it, and now we get it. So then you set that aside. And then the next experiment, and this can go any number of ways, what we decided to do this last time was ask them to keep the same order but not use one of them. And then see how that changes. And so they would predict then what whether it would whether it be the same or different, if it'd be better or worse. And then, you know, what we would what we volunteers would take these filters, dump them out, and uh, had more material for them, and then they would pick what they wanted. And so then they would, in this example, they would just have two layers then. They pour the water through, and we give them more dirty water, plenty of dirt, plenty of water. Um, and they do come out different. They often do come out different. There, there's a noticeable shade, different shade in the color, you know? And they say, oh, it's different, or that's cleaner, or that's, or that's dirtier. And it's like, well, how do you know? <laughs> you know? So to describe the color, describe it in bigger chunks, that sort of thing and go down through uh, a description of it. And then, so that's the results part, and I said, okay. So then we say, okay, well, you can use whatever order you want. You can use only one material, you can use all three, whatever you want to do. Make a filter that you think is going to do better than these two experiments, based on what we learned here. And it is really amazing what they come up with. Uh, some of them, on their third experiment, they came out cleaner. Some of them didn't. Um, and then the important thing, which is often left out, and uh, Kathy uh, works with me, uh, she uh, really, really uh, uh, reaches the kids pretty well. And one thing she mentioned about the scientific methods often left out is, is uh, to share your results. So then once each table, let's say like six tables of four kids each, uh, each table then has their three ones. You say, well, which one was your best? You know, and what'd you get? And say, well, what, what filter did you use? Well, the one that came out the best, they just used a huge amount of sand. <laughs> um, you know, and, and another group that, uh, where theirs was, where their third experiment was the cleanest, also had a significant amount of sand. And so, you can at least preliminary draw a conclusion from your results of your experimentation. Um, but like I said, there's a lot of variables here, but, you know, you just have to pick something and run with it. And, um, so it, it seems to work really well. The teachers really appreciate it. Uh, the students enjoy it. Uh, they, they, and it's, it, it is some, it's amazing. They, they do come up with some neat things. It works. In what grade level have you done this with them? Uh, this is third grade. Yep. Yeah, it's, it's plenty. It, it, it's plenty, but... Uh, you know, you, you kind of walk them through it, and the teacher's always there, which is always nice. Uh, she handles it. They, they, they handle the discipline. They're, it's remarkable. I didn't even realize a kid acts up, and all of a sudden there's a kid by himself over here. So <laughs> he, and the rest of the group is moving along fine. Oh, okay, sure. <laughs> Go ahead. Uh, I really like this experiment. It uh, looks like a lot of fun, and I'm sure the kids get a lot out of it. Um, I like the fact that you use those little four cup holders that you get from McDonald's to transport them. <laughs> that's pretty niche. I mean, that's a good idea. And a lot of these materials you can reuse, right? So. Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, we end up throwing this part out, but um, 
any dry materials that are left we keep, the, the cups that hold the dry materials we keep. Yeah, we, we, try, to, we try to do as much as we can, uh, but there's, we also have a storage issue, so we keep the dry stuff and then throwing away the wet stuff. Gotcha. So it's somewhere in between. Yeah, I had a few of these in my office, I bought this a lot. Because <laughs> when we, when we, we spread, it, sp spread it out ahead of time, so I have like two puppy paper boxes full of these. <laughs> How many of those gizmos do you bring to clients? Well, we. we is there one for each table? Too one for yes. I'm sorry. There's one for each table. Okay. Yes. Yeah. So they all have a set of ingredients. They have some plate or something to catch some extra spills, and they have a filter. And how many table groups do you have? Six. six. Usually five or six. And you have two. Uh, there's two classrooms, but we don't do them at the same time. Well, I mean, uh, the teachers and adults. That Oh yes, there is one teacher there. One teacher. And then it's myself, and we have anywhere from six to three volunteers, including myself. Oh. Yeah, we, we usually they're, we they're usually. Well, that's right. You say. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, we we yeah we, we usually try to do. Uh, I know that's a little unusual for most people. They, that's just one person, but uh, uh, for those of us you know that don't work with kids much, usually it's great to have. <laughs> A volunteer with each table and the teacher there, and, and, it, and, it, and it does work out pretty well. The, te the kids really like us. They'll sometimes they'll give you a hug on the way out or something. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so Tom, you mentioned that each student um, sort of pours a different, has a different responsibility. Yes. How do you um, come up with that? How did, how does that work? How do you well, decide? Well, well, actually, the first part I forgot to mention. The teacher has a worksheet. Uh, with their version of the scientific method, so we just follow whatever they whatever they provide, and they know the students pretty well, and so they designate from each group who's going to be writing everything down. But after that, it's just a matter of which kid grabs what Grab first. It. Okay. Yeah, right. yeah. We don't necessarily go around and say, "Okay, you pour the pebbles and you do this." Right. You know, they each take turns. I, I can probably. Oh yeah, go ahead. Yeah. So, what we found is so you'll, we have. Three ingredients minus right. the cotton and a cup of water. And what what we sort of started doing is at the beginning we put all the materials but the water. <laughs> Very important. To put the water on. Um, we put everything on the table, and what we found has really helped, especially with discipline, because all the kids they're, they're third graders, right? So they want to touch everything. Yes. So it's rather than yelling at everyone for touching, <laughs> we have said the first step is for you to touch everything. And so we go around and we say, yeah, t put your hand in the cup full of sand. Touch the rocks. When, you've done, when you're done touching it, pass it to your neighbor and, and touch something else. Okay. The, the filter, the, so the bottle there with the Brillo pad on it, right. they, they're amazing. They pick it up and I, I, I say, what is that in there? You're, you touch the bottle too. What is that in there? What do you think this is? Touch it. Is it hard? And I, oh, it's, it's a puff ball. <laughs> yes, yes it is, but what is what is this other stuff? And we get everything from, well, is it plastic? Because they don't, they haven't washed dishes generally, right, so, they so they don't know, know what a Brillo pad is. But like, they figure out, oh, it's shiny like metal, maybe yeah. it's metal, oh, it's got holes in it. And so they start out where everybody sort of has a cup or has a job. So we have three cups and a writer. Okay. Um, and the, yeah. way we, the way I was sort of directing the last time we did it is, all right, each person gets to pour their ingredient the writer, who has to do all the writing, gets to pour the water first. Uh, oh, the second good. time, we yeah. rotate who gets, okay, you had the sand last time, this time you get the pebbles. Mm -hmm. You poured the water last time, okay, this time she gets to pour the water. Okay. And so it, it's a little bit equitable, you know. We, yeah. we try to make it equitable. Everybody wants to pour the water in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and it can be tricky because we've, we've, like last time, we only had three volunteers for six groups, so it's hard to keep track of who's who, so as long yeah. as everyone has a job. Another quick option that you can do is you can just have the kids number themselves. So when you first walk in, everybody at the table, get one, two, three, or four, and then you as the leader can say, okay, all my number ones, oh, pick, pick a material, all my number twos, and then you can also make sure, because it is very important that every child oh, yeah. has right. something to do. Yeah. yeah, and it may be a little bit easier when you have that many volunteers, but if you're a single volunteer with six tables, yeah. uh, there are gonna be some kids that are, are gonna be more assertive and trying to do everything. That's what I found. Yeah. So, so I do. I usually do get each student a number. A number. Okay. Um, 
Okay, thank you very much, Tom. Now, um, Harold Smith has a degree in thermomechanical engineering from the University of South Carolina. Uh, did a stint in the naval aviation in Pensacola, Florida, after college. Moved back to Virginia to work at the U.S. Patent and Trade Office for the next 34 years. So we have some colleagues here. They can see what happens after we graduate. <laughs> <laughs> um, he's an instrument rated private pilot, uh, though not currently active. Spends lots of time on long distance cruises on sailing and power vessels. Tough business. And fourth year volunteering with Reset, he's been at Barrett and Kelly Camilla. Uh, elementary schools in Virginia. So, Harold? So, I guess we need. Yeah, let's do that so I uh, get you videoed with your PowerPoint. So